earlier like my, when my phone does that like it starts off very low and all of a sudden my audio just shoots up one of my one of my subscribers um it's actually matt dog shout out to you dog told me that the audio is kind of i mean i noticed it too i just didn't say anything but i apologize if it bothered you know what i have a camera but i don't have like the i think it needs the usb to because i don't know how my connections are i have a connection there and two there which one of those twos is for the chart one of those twos one of those is for the charger but i have a camera let me hold. look check it out got this canon revel e what is it revel t3i pretty cool got it from my homie i think these are like 300 400 bucks maybe i don't know i know they're expensive though wait i'm not trying to fuck it up before i use it whatever just know i have a better video quality thing um i might need to get a tripod for it a usb to transfer the videos to the laptop and a mic that attaches i think it attaches up here yeah and then it connects to here it attaches i think i'm gonna get one of those road ones road mics attach it here and connect it here just know i do have a camera so whenever i get this set up whenever i get everything for this and figure out what usb to connect these to i'll start filming on this and maybe they'll they'll fix the audio probably better quality just know i do got a camera where i put it i'll put it over here for now anyways we're doing another reaction to Doctors No Sleep Again. This one is Three Ghost Hunting Horror Stories. So I just did a paranormal one. I guess it was only right to do this one. I'll do the Insane Asylum tomorrow night. I don't know if I want to react to Snarled again. Because I think I've done four of their videos. And I got copyrighted for two of them. It wasn't like a copyright strike, it was a claim, which it lets me keep it on my YouTube. It's just I won't get paid for, I mean, I don't get paid for any of them anyways, but if I eventually do start getting paid, I won't make money off of that. Which I'll probably just stop reacting to those because I listen to their podcast and I emailed them to get their permission to do it. And they said, yeah, but I don't know. I'm. Just, I mean, at least I can keep them on here. That's cool. Which... I don't know, but this guy, Dr. Sleep, I, has, I have his permission too. Um, hopefully I don't get a copyright for his videos. Anyways, let's just start watching this because this is a, a 19 minute video. So this is gonna be a 20 minute video already. All right, let's just start it. Lego. My hands began to sweat as I gripped on tightly to my wife, Sarah. Is there a Walter Thompson here? Gloria led the ritual. She was an older woman who had years of specialized experience in this type of work. Her husband, Tom, was her business partner and joined us in the ritual today. My wife and I originally reached out to Gloria because... We had noticed some strange occurrences happening in our newly purchased home. Doors would creak and close randomly. Objects would move slightly throughout the house. Eventually, it started scaring my wife. So, here we are, seated at our kitchen table with the lights dimmed. I felt like I was in a plot for an insidious sequel to me this was a bit much walter are you here with us right now gloria pleaded with someone who didn't respond with my eyes closed i smiled at how bizarre this felt i didn't know who walter was but supposedly 
Gloria did her research on our house Side and dude. found that an old man named Walter Thompson owned this house in the late 1800s. Never mind. I, on the other hand, didn't do my research and simply bought the house because the price was unbeatable. Walter, can you give us a sign to let us know you're here? Her words echoed throughout the large dining room. Our hands remained clenched together. Walter, give us a sign. Moments later, a creak from the old wooden floor got our attention. I peeked out of one eye at my wife, who continued to keep her eyes shut. Walter, was that you? Gloria continued to question. Another creak echoed from the wooden floorboards, but this time longer and louder. Walter, my name is Gloria. I want to know why you remain here in this house. Gloria waited for a response, but got none. Walter, are you here because of what happened to your wife? Our large chandelier above our table began to rock back and forth. At this point, everyone, even Gloria, opened her eyes. Walter, I want you to know that what went on that night happened a very long time ago, she continued. These people have nothing to do with what happened. These are good people. The lights began to flicker. Walter, do you understand that? Without a response, Gloria continued. Walter, I want you to be free from this house. Your wife is no longer here. You are free to go. I was in shock. I looked at my wife, who no longer had her eyes shut. She was near tears. Walter, in the front room, the piercing sound of a television turning on grabbed all of our attention as it loudly switched from channel to channel. Do not break the circle. Leave it on, Gloria yelled to us. Gloria continued the ritual. Walter, I demand that you leave this house right now. You have no business being here any longer. The chandelier above rocked ferociously back and forth as stomping from upstairs filled the room. Ignore it, Gloria demanded. I stared at my wife in amazement and disbelief as she wept. Walter, she's gone. Your wife is gone. She cannot hurt you anymore. With that, Silence. The chandelier stopped. The television flicked off. The stomping subsided. I looked at my wife and questioned. What do you know? What the hell happened in this house? Gloria finally opened her eyes and stared at me. There was a man who lived in this house named Walter Thompson. He was murdered by his wife. He had an affair, and she was never able to forgive him, so she brutally killed him. What? I said out of confusion. Gloria let go of my hand and stood up from the table, breaking the circle. Honey, the circle! Her husband, Tom, quickly exclaimed. But Gloria stood up and walked over to the window. Her name was Evelyn Thompson. She killed her husband. The chandelier began to lightly swing again. Sound familiar? She did everything for her husband, but he was infatuated with the woman living next door. Gloria's husband tried stopping her. Gloria, please come back to the circle. He didn't realize all that she did for him. Again, Gloria's husband spoke. Damn it, Gloria, get back to the table. The table began to shake uncontrollably. Gloria turned around and Lift stared with dead eyes at her husband. 
Her face was changed. Isn't that right, Walter? Gloria ran over to her husband and grabbed him and started choking him by the throat. The His face do? grew blue as he begged the best he could. My wife screamed. Uh -huh. I jumped from the table and ran over to Gloria. I pulled at her until she let go of... Okay. Why'd they sit there that long? Waited. And why is the dude just sitting there letting himself get choked out? I'd have been like... Unhand me, woman. I mean, unless... unless well, I kind of do see him try holding her hands to get it off. Unless she was possessed and somehow got stronger than him. She already looks creepy though. The the wife, the the one that got possessed, she already looked creepy. Husband who dropped lifelessly to the floor. He did? She made me. Gloria screamed. She's here. She she made me break the circle. Gloria looked at her husband's cold body. My God, what have I done? She weeped. I tried to make sense of everything. I grabbed on to Gloria and held her as she cried. What about your I wife? I looked around. Sarah, I called for my wife, still sitting at the table. Hmm. Baby, come here. My wife stared at me. Are you okay, Sarah? I cried out to her. She stood up. Her movements were stiff. Sarah, honey, we need help over here. What's wrong with you? She looked at me with dead eyes. She spoke in a demonic voice. Nothing, Walter. You know she next. So everybody got possessed. Oh, that's crazy. I would always say if like my place was haunted, obviously this is not my place, but this is haunted. That's why you don't really see me reacting much because I'm like, I'm trying to get through these videos because Loki, I'm kind of scared because it's kind of similar shit that could happen. No, I don't know about possessed. The ghost probably watching me like, you sure about that, bro? I don't know. I'm a little scared, though. I'm not gonna lie. There's only three stories. We're eight minutes in. So we need another 10, 11 minutes. All right, let's finish these up. The old Mackinac Hotel isn't like anything you've really seen before. In 1908, Bernard Mackinac purchased the hotel and soon after married his longtime love, Janice. Why do I have a feeling the daughters are gonna be the ghosts? I have a feeling something happened to this family and the two kids are gonna be the ghosts. They already look, they're like in those suits or whatever the hell they're called. <clears throat> yeah, I can already tell they they're gonna have the kids gonna have something to do with it. Or gonna be the ghost. One of those two. The couple had two children, both of which would die in the hotel before their I mean, third birthday in room two fourteen. I'm not clapping because he died, but so why am I laughing? That's not funny. That's not funny. But I was clapping because I was right. That's sad. Prior to the purchase, the hotel was an old preliminary school that was shut down after the schoolmaster, Martha Sandoval, took her own life. For years, many have said it is too haunted to even visit. 
I'm about to prove that theory wrong. Are you I'm now? what they call an outdated ghost hunter. I use equipment that many ghost hunter companies would laugh at because it's so old fashioned. It's the only equipment that I believe works, and I've had great success with it. The Excuse old Mackinac me. Hotel has always been one of my most sought after hunts. I arrived around dusk to find the old hotel sitting on the corner of a quiet, empty street. I always take my assistant, Delma, with me. Regardless of the fact that she speaks little English, she is quite good at following instructions. The main lobby is cluttered with antique furniture and light fixtures. Portraits of family members line the dust-stained corridors. <clears throat> I feel like for me, it, it, it'll be interesting, but as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, like, I'm already creeped out being in this house watching these, especially at this time of the night. <clears throat> but this is probably about the only time I can do it. Like, I'll be interested but scared. I'll probably ask somebody that I know. If they're gonna do it, record it for me. Cause I don't know. The thing about me is that I see ghost hunting as a job, not an adrenaline sport. It takes quite a bit for me to get scared. I immediately take out my EMF meter, which can detect changes in any type of energy. The gauge bounces wildly. Delma, I want you to stay down here in the lobby while I check out the upstairs. I notice the change in expression upon Delma's face. She didn't want to be here. The main staircase is nothing grand or luxurious. The I feel like if you're gonna go ghost hunting and there's only two people, Y'all shouldn't separate. I thought he said she didn't speak it. Well, she might understand it. She probably just don't speak it. I think that's what he said. Yeah, y'all shouldn't separate. That's... <sighs> the constructed steps squeak under my feet as I ascend to the top. A cold rush of wind rushes past my face as I reach the top of the staircase. The hallway is dark and uninviting. Again, my EMF meter dances freely with the change in energy. Room 214. It was buried into my mind. As I begin my journey down the hall, footsteps emanate from the staircase behind me and slow I really hope that didn't just happen. <sighs> I really hope it didn't just happen. Either it was a hair or I just saw something white literally pass. <sighs> I'm getting chills. I don't even want to say it. Just get get this over with. You fade away. I continue on my way. The old walkie-talkie clipped to my belt starts humming. It has a static tone to it, almost as if someone is trying to speak. I grab the walkie and pull the talk button. Delma, are you all right? I wait for a moment. Yes, I'm okay. She reassures me. I'm getting a little static on the walkie. I'm going to 214. I'll be down in a couple minutes. Once Are again, you? I begin to creep forward. I continue forward with painstakingly slow footsteps. I whip my head backwards as hollow sounds of crying emanate in the distance. 
Uh, she just gave me chills on my whole back. I'm such a bitch. It's probably the environment. Because knowing there's some shit like that in here, fuck. <sighs> yeah, you probably can't see my chills. Crying that sounds like children. I try to keep my mind focused, but I can feel my adrenaline start pumping. Me right now. My flashlight marks the dreary red carpet in front of me. Carpet that likely hasn't been cleaned in decades. Finally, I reach my destination, room 214. I pause for a moment to collect myself. I slowly crack open the door. The old door hinges that haven't been greased in ages let out a terrible screeching sound. Inside, there's a bed with white sheets. I whisper into my walkie-talkie. Delma. No response. Static. Delma, are you okay? I hear the distant sounds of breathing through the walkie. I hear a low whisper. Get out. Delma. I'm coming down now. I call into the walkie-talkie. Again, static. And then, get out! The demonic voice, loud and screaming, almost sends me to the floor. In the corner, I saw a figure hanging by a rope, staring at me through oh the my jet black hair covering her decrepit face. Just then, the door behind me slams shut. Believe it or not, I'm, I have chills. You, you can't see them though. Uh, no, you can't. I'm creeped out though. I'm not gonna lie. Last story, you gotta get through this. That's if I don't pass out. Uh, it's funny how I always said his his animations or stories are not scary, but he's probably watching me right now. He's like, yeah, I'm not scary. All right. Well, if for some reason you are, bro, Dr. No Sleep, if for some reason you're watching this, you got me. Which I doubt he is, but if you are, thanks. My whole life, I've lived in a small town. No, it's not rural, but it definitely isn't a metropolitan area. It's one of those towns, if you zoom in a little bit on Google Maps, it'll eventually pop up. The funny thing about my town is that it's most well known for a little cemetery that sits at its center. When I tell people where I'm from, the first thing they ask about is that cemetery. And yes, it has been described as one of the most haunted places in America. And yes, it is in fact haunted. I've been to that old cemetery many times. I feel like every cemetery is haunted. Don't you? Unless it's just me. Like, I don't know what. I just heard breathing and that wasn't me. I don't know what those rooms are called. Where they store the dead bodies with the toe tags and everything. I'd feel like those places would be haunted too. I think anywhere where they store dead bodies or there are dead bodies around. Is sweating. Oh shit. But only once at night. I promised after that night I would never go back. One weekend, 
two of my friends and I thought it would be a good idea to go ghost hunting at this specific cemetery. We soon look. We gotta wrap this up. It was the exact opposite. None of us had much experience with the paranormal, but I, for one, was always intrigued. We loaded up a camera, some cheap EVP equipment that we bought on Amazon, and made our way across town. To get to this cemetery, there is a long, beaten down trail with woods on both sides. The walk down that trail seemed like it took forever. I began regretting my decision when we finally got to the gate leading into the cemetery. This gate is always locked at night to prevent vandals from entering. However, tonight, the gate was wide open, almost like it was inviting us in. The minute I stepped in, I felt a chill crawl down my spine. We unloaded our equipment and started randomly filming different areas of the cemetery. Leaves crunched under our feet as the full moon above guided us through the dark cemetery. To be honest, I didn't Excuse want me. to be there. Something felt off. Then leave. We continued to walk aimlessly around looking for anything interesting. Within moments, we found something. In front of me was a tombstone, rotten with built-up dirt. On it was the word, sun. There was something about this specific tombstone. No name, no dates, just that one word. Next to the grave was a small stuffed teddy bear. It too was battered and worn. My friends could sense my fear and began joking around, calling me a wimp and a baby when I told them I wanted to leave. So, in a juvenile attempt at impressing them and showing my false bravery. Please don't touch me. You touched the teddy bear. Fuck, gotta sneeze again. Oh, I hate that it went away. Yeah, please don't tell me you touched that teddy bear. I took the teddy bear and threw it deep into the surrounding woods. First thing I say. Our laughs echoed through the crisp night. We decided after another 30 minutes or so without any substantial happenings that it was time to leave. I'm sweaty. I can't We reviewed tell. our footage on the walk home. In every video clip, there was a white figure standing immediately behind me. We thought that maybe it was just an issue with the film, but the more we looked, we realized that there was something there with us. I have a feeling that's me right now. That's going to be me when I'm editing this. Probably going to be somebody right here. Oh, fuck. I'm regretting my decision. Decision. My friends dropped me off that night at my house. I felt scared and ashamed for what I had done. I walked up to my front door and was immediately stopped in my tracks. The bears at his door. I looked around, scared to death. I didn't know what to do. Sitting on my front porch was a battered and worn teddy bear. Thanks for watching. You can watch a similar video here. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more videos. Okay. You did it tonight. 
X out, X out, shut down laptop, shut down, close this, save my outro, and get the fuck out. Even though I'm gonna still be in this house, but I don't know. I'm gonna try and go to sleep by like 2 a.m. I don't know if y'all could tell, but I'm scared. I sound like a bitch. Anyways, I'll try and do another video tomorrow at this time, or I'll do it during the day. I'm gonna try the insane asylum. Yeah. I really hope I don't see shit behind me when I edit this video. Anyways, if you guys like this reaction, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you want to. I would appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get out of here before some shit happens. I will see you guys on the next one. Later.